Hi there, Michael Burnett, AF7KB, that fast track ham license guy here, with how to study for your ham license. Okay, brace yourself, this could turn into a rant. If you're going to get your ham license, and I hope you are, it's going to take some work. Ah, work! I know, I know. People tell me all the time that people don't like to work. Strangely enough, they never seem to include themselves in that. Maybe they're extra special. I think people do like to work, if they know what to work at and if they feel like they're accomplishing something. So let's see what we can do about that for you. It turns out there's been a lot of research done on how to learn science and math subjects most effectively. And you know, those subjects are most of ham radio. It also turns out that the wonderful internet has all sorts of sites happy to dispense advice on the so-called easy way to get your ham radio license. I imagine you'll be shocked, shocked, to learn that a lot of that advice is not really so great. Here's what the internet says. And again, you can find lots of sites that say this. Don't bother studying, just go to the practice exam sites and practice until you can pass. I get the appeal of this approach, as goofy as it is. Those practice exam sites are free and, hey, no studying. At least that's the illusion. Now think, is there any other topic in the world that you'd try to learn by taking exams? It's insane. Don't bother going to truck driving school. Just go take the truck driving exam until you pass. It's like, I want to learn about ham radio, but uh, I'd like to do it in a way where I don't really have to learn about ham radio. Please? See, ham radio is anything but plug and play. That's kind of the whole point of it. Making it work right takes real knowledge, real skill, and real practice. Getting that technician ticket is not a final destination. It's the start of the journey, really. It's your license to learn more. Believe it or not, the whole art and science of radio communications isn't completely covered by a 35-question multiple-choice exam. If you learn what's behind the questions on the exam, you know enough to start asking intelligent questions. If you want plug and play, get yourself one of these deals and hope that the cell phone company stays in business. They probably will. I can't tell you how many technician class hams I've met over the years who've been kind of embarrassed to admit that they didn't remember a thing from the exam. Well, truth is, they didn't have to tell me. It was kind of obvious. And not that they were bad guys, but they just weren't getting out of the hobby what they could be getting out of the hobby. And how did they study? Every single time. I just went to the practice exam thing. And if they ever decide to upgrade their license, guess what? They're going to have to start all over again from the basics. And here's the thing. Nobody likes flailing around in an environment where they don't know what they're doing. So a lot of those instant hams, just add water, never do a thing with the hobby. Not a thing! They went through all the effort of getting the license and then... Nothing! Shortcuts are often shortcuts to nowhere. There is a time when those practice exams are a fantastic tool. Again, this is backed up by research. That time is after you know the material. That's why I recommend the practice exam sites that let you zero in on a particular sub-element of the exam after you've studied it. That way, you're training your brain to access the correct answers, which strengthens the neural pathways in there that represent the answer. That's the right way to use those sites and apps and whatnot. If you practice giving incorrect answers, well, you're strengthening the neural pathways for the wrong answers. See, we get told practice makes perfect. <laughs> no. 
Practice does not make perfect. Practice makes permanent. So here's a plan of action that will work that's based on real science. Step one, commit to taking and passing the exam on a particular date and stick with the commitment. I give that advice in every book, and I get email all the time from hams who are like, you know, I like the book, but the best thing you said was that thing about committing to taking the exam. <laughs> I know. Even better, tell people your commitment. Yeah, then you're really on the hook and you'll perform. If you can get someone to be a study buddy with you and commit to taking the exam on the same day, that is really powerful. Choose an amount of time that's challenging but doable. For most folks, I think you should count on prepping for the technician exam for eh, two weeks to a month. Could you start hammering on the technician book on Wednesday and take the test on Saturday? Yeah, probably, especially if you have some knowledge of the field already. I know it can be done because it's exactly how I got my technician and general in about a week. But see, I grew up with a dad who was a World War II Navy submarine radio operator. I built my first radio when I was eight, and I spent 25 years as a commercial broadcaster. I knew the answers because I knew radio. But for folks who aren't already expert in the field, take the time to really get the fundamentals. Ohm's law, bandwidth, modulation systems, radio waves, antennas, propagation, FCC law, operating procedures, and even the safety sections. Yes, these things and more aren't hurdles to jump over and leave behind. They're the very foundation of the hobby. Knowledge quickly learned is knowledge quickly burned. Knowledge slowly gained is knowledge that's retained. Now, that isn't just some pulled-out-of-the-air, sounds-good-and-it-rhymes slogan. That is based on that real neurological research done by real neurological researchers with lab coats and clipboards and footnotes. Build that solid foundation of knowledge. I promise you'll have more fun in the long run. In my books, I'm trying to get you to win the ham game long-term. It's part of why I have stuff in there that isn't even on the exam. For the general exam, prep time is really variable, based on your current knowledge and experience. I think for most folks, count on a month to two months. If you've built your fundamentals solidly, a lot of that will be very useful in the general, and even the extra. By the way, I think a really smart thing to do is prep for the technician and the general at the same time. There's a lot of overlap in the material. For extra, probably two months to three months. Seriously, the question banks for technician and general are about 400 questions each. The extra is over 700. And not many of them have super obvious correct answers. There's some pretty esoteric and challenging stuff in there. No matter which license class you're going for, I recommend you do not stretch things out much beyond the recommended times. The reason is, if you drag it out over a year, you'll start forgetting stuff that you learned back at the start of the year. You'll be studying forever. Step two. Commit to learning the body of knowledge, not just the questions and answers. Obviously, I'd love to sell you a bunch of books and audio programs, but get my stuff or W5YI's stuff or the ARRL stuff. It's all good. And actually learn about all the topics and technology covered in the exam. Step three, first read through. Read and or listen to the whole book or audio course. Don't worry about remembering. Don't even worry about whether you're understanding it or not. Just put the words in your brain. I know this runs counter to what we think school taught us, but it's right in line with the research. This read-through is just to get your brain chewing on the subject matter. You'll probably be surprised how much will actually stick, but you're not done. Step four, study, review, test. Repeat as necessary. Now you start your chapter-by-chapter -chapter attack. Take notes by hand. 
there's lots of evidence that the brain-to-hand-to-brain connection created by writing key points burns things into memory far more effectively than just reading, and that's doubly true for the math formulas. Do not use a highlighter. The research shows they actually decrease learning, probably by tricking your brain into thinking it can ignore whatever is highlighted. No matter which level license you're going for, as you go through the text you're studying, there are almost certainly going to be parts where you go, yeah, 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 I know this stuff. Great, go do a practice exam, just to be sure, and move on to the next chapter. Study that chapter, practice test, and retest on all the practice exams that you've done so far. That way you just keep building knowledge and drilling that memory. Optional step five, if you get stuck. All of us have moments when we hit the wall, you know, when we're just not getting it. Here's what to do. Take 25 minutes, not 24, not 26, 25 minutes, and do absolutely nothing but practice that formula or whatever it is you're working on. Write it a few times, covering up what you wrote before so you're not just copying it. Plug in different numbers, practice working it. Just engage 100% with whatever it is. Then stop. Research shows that more is not better, in this case anyway. Put that thing away. Go do something else. Take a walk. Take a nap. Study some other part of the exam. Fire up the radio. Play ham radio for a while. Or if you're a technician student and don't have a license yet, go on websdr.org and listen to stuff. Anything except that formula. A day or so later, come back to it. You're probably going to be amazed to find that your brain has continued processing it and things have gotten easier. There's a name for this process. It's called going into diffuse mode. It's been used by lots of brilliant people whether consciously or unconsciously. There's a great book on all this and more research-proven learning and test-taking techniques. It's called A Mind for Numbers, How to Excel at Math and Science Even If You Flunked Algebra. It's by Barbara Oakley. Now, Barbara is not some new-age hippy-dippy idle speculator. She's Barbara Oakley, Ph.D., P.E., professional engineer. She's a professor of engineering at Oakland University in Michigan. She's also one of the professors of the very popular Coursera course called Learning to Learn. Her work has been a huge influence on the Fast Track series, and a lot of the techniques that she covers are sort of built into the programs. I really recommend it for anyone interested in making their brain work better. Okay, rant over. Glad I got that off my chest. I feel much better now. Thanks for watching. Keep learning. And if there's some ham radio topic that you'd like to see a video on and we don't have it up yet, let us know about it. 73 AF7KB clear.